In this lesson, I'm going to go over how to create a simple HTML-based email for an email campaign. There will be three steps in the process. First, we'll actually create the HTML page and we will upload it to our server so that we can use it for our email. Second, we're going to test in the Adobe Browser Lab, which will let us test how our email will appear in several different browsers. And finally, we're going to use Campaign Monitor, which will allow us to create a free email-based campaign. So we're going to start by creating our simple website. I've created this using tables for alignment, not CSS. And I've done this because table alignment is supported by browsers and email clients going back for years and years. CSS support is there, but it's not as reliable as using the older technology in case somebody has older versions. So we've done this all with nested tables. I am currently in Optana Studio and I'm in my preview mode. And you'll see that I have an outside area, which is dark blue. I picked these colors using cooler.adobe.com by uploading my header image, which I've already used Photoshop to resize to the width of 500, which is how wide I want my email to be. I've kept this very simple. It's actually four separate tables. Each table only has one cell. We have the outside table where I've set this dark blue color to serve as a frame. We have our header which holds the image, my masthead image. We have the main content area and then we have the footer with our unsubscribe information. Let's look at how it's coded. I don't have anything in the head because this is really going to be sent by email and I'm not worried about a title. I'm showing you here how to do a comment in HTML. I frequently like to use comments because I do have a programming background and I'm really leaving notes for myself in case I have to come back and modify this in the future. You'll notice here that I'm saying that we will nest tables. The outside table will provide a background color and the inside tables will provide content. So I've set the entire width of the outside table to 550 and I've aligned it to the center and used the background color. So that's this outside table here, which is a sort of ocean blue that was picked up from my colors in here. Then my top table inside of that, and you'll notice that I am assigning an ID. This is not necessary. This does not have to be in there. It will work perfectly without it. The ID is for me. It's to tell me which table is which. So this table is my header where my masthead is saved. It does have a background color in case images are disabled and my alt tag will show Travels with Seamus. And so I have only one row, one data cell, which is center aligned, top aligned here. Didn't set the width on the cell. I probably should have. It should be 500. I did set the width on the table though, which is 500. This might affect it in older browsers. So I have my image with no border and its source is masthead.jpg and my alt tag is travels with Seamus. The height is 113. The width is 500. I edited that in Photoshop and that closes the header table here. Close the Data cell close the row, close the table. And any time that you are previewing in Aptano, you'll notice I made a change. There's a star here showing the change has been made. Before you can preview it again, you need to hit save, and then that will update your preview window. So it's easy to flip back and forth. That doesn't really make any difference here because I did set the table width to 500. So you'll see that my table width is 500 and each of these interior tables is centered, providing a nice border around them. So next we're going to look at the body table, the main table. In lesson 7.1, the code, I have closed out the previous row, I've started a new row, and inside this row I have a TD with an aligned center, V aligned top, width of 500, and then my table, which I give an ID of main, because it's my main section, 
I have cell padding set to 10. This puts a 10 pixel blank around the whole thing. Let me show you what it looks like without this and you'll see why it's important. I'm going to save this and preview. Notice that it's coming up directly along the edge here. I don't like the look of that. So I'm going to put it back to the cell padding of 10. I'm going to save it and preview and that's giving me this nice 10 pixel spacing between the words and the edge. It would exist on the other side and top and bottom if I was close there as well. And then inside my main content I have my table in here. I have one row, one TD, where I've set a style for the whole TD to be a font family of Arial, Helvetica, Sans Serif. That way I don't need to set it for each tag. Anytime I'm using style, this is actually an inline cascading style. And that applies to everything until I close that cell. So I can have header tags, paragraphs, I can have links. Notice I'm opening it in blank. You always want to open to blank when you're opening from an email that's opening it in a new page that's for your target. And I have some um, unordered lists in here. I can put all the content I want inside that table cell. When I close that table cell, you'll notice I have my comment closes the body table. And that is this whole table cell right here. Then in my footer, You'll notice the only thing that's interesting here is that I have unsubscribe instead of an email. This is because of the requirements of our, our email server that I'll show you in the third lesson. Create your simple email that you will upload to the server. I've called mine Lesson 7-1 and you can go out and look at the code on the website and then you're going to take that web address and we're going to test it in multiple browsers. I'll show you that in the next step.